In this week's episode of Working with Todoist, we're going back to basics. Hello and welcome to this new mini-series, what I'm calling my Working With Todoist Back to Basics series. And the purpose of this series is to take us all back to the basics of setting up Todoist. Now, this is going to work whether you're a beginner, whether you're an intermediate user or whether you're a power user. It doesn't really matter. For beginners, of course, we're still learning the basics of using Todoist. For the intermediate levels, maybe your Todoist is beginning to get a little bit overwhelming. And for, uh, for you power users out there, then I know that you're suffering from a little bit of overwhelm because all systems become overwhelming after some time. And so what I decided to do is I'm going to put together this mini series where we go through the basics of setting up Todoist so that whether you're a beginner, an intermediate level or an advanced user, you can just be reminded of where it all began, how to set everything up, how to get everything working and why it works in the way that it works that I'm going to show you. So let's get straight into this. This week we're going to start off with projects and in the following weeks we will do tags and filters and general basic everyday usage. But today we're going to start off with the projects. Now please guys don't forget to like this video. I think it's down here. Is it down here or is it down here? Anyway please like this video and also don't forget if you haven't subscribed already I would really appreciate it if you would just go down there and click that button that says subscribe. Subscribe. Go on you know you want to do it so please don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Let's move on then. Let's get straight into this and let's start going back to basics on using projects in Todoist. Right, let's start off with the main project view, which you get to by just clicking on this section here, projects. And what I want, what I always recommend to all the people who I coach and train is set up six basic projects. The first one is routines, second work, third home, fourth areas of focus, fifth goals and the sixth one a someday maybe folder. Now I like to call these basic ones folders uh, but they are essentially just projects. Now within these we need to create some sub projects or child projects. Now with routines what I recommend is always set up a daily, weekly and monthly. Now for these tasks these are the sort of tasks that you have to do every single day. Now what I've noticed is this one's actually in the wrong folder so put that one in there. So a daily task might be something like as I do update sales report figures. So you could add, just quickly add the task update sales report figures and that's going to be done every that's going to be done say at computer and it's going to be done every day. So we type in every day, every day. So that's basically an example of a daily task that you would have to do. Now let's say, for example, that your update sales report figures, you just, all you need to do is just find out what the sales figures for the day were, add it into a report, and then you can just check it off, check it off, and then it's done for tomorrow. Weekly ones, as it's showing you, you've got update sales report, and maybe you want to be reminded of take your garbage out and monthly could be any task that you have to do monthly. Now the reason I always recommend you set up a routines folder is because your routines are never going to take your life further forward. Routines are just things that you have to do and you want to have the ability to separate them out from the 
the tasks that are going to move you closer to your goals, move you closer to completing projects. That's why I like to have the routines folder and that's why I always recommend that people take some time out to figure out all the things that they have to do on a regular basis that is never going to take their lives further forward. And that's why I would always start off with a routines folder. The next folder, if you like, is a work folder and in here you would keep all the projects that you actually want to keep. So all the projects at work that you are currently working on. Now remember to create a project, you've got several ways of doing it. You could just add a project here and you could say another, let's say another work project. Uh, add the project and then you can just drag it into your works folder and sure enough if I do that you can see it's just added. To delete a project it's really quite simple. You can either archive it which means that there is a record of it which is the one that I would strongly recommend that people use rather than just deleting the project but if it was just an accident and you don't want to keep a record of it you can click delete project. So these two here would deal with that. So all you have to do to access that is if you move your mouse across to the three dashes, sorry, the three dots, you get a number of options open to you. Archive or delete project is the best one. If you want to keep a record of the project, archive it. If you just like me, in this case, just an example, you can delete it and just hit delete. So that's a simple one. Another way to add a project, by the way, is you can just uh, click on the three dots of one of the projects and you get the option add project above or add project below. Now, if you do it this way, you're going to add it into the work folder directly, which I think is a very good way. If you do it this way, it's going to add the same thing. It's just going to give you the option to add underneath. So there's just one, one way to do it. Now, let's just say that I wanted to create an additional folder. Why would you want to do that? But let's just say you wanted to do that. Well, the easiest way to do it is just add the project. So another folder, let's say. I would say that's the easiest way to do it because then it stays in line with all your other projects. So that's just one way of doing that. Okay, so that's dealing with the projects. Let's just delete that project. The home folder is another one that you just use to keep all the stuff that you need to do essentially in your personal life. So you could call it home or personal. I've just always had the habit of calling things work and home. It just makes life a bit easier. In here I can keep things like housework. But to be honest, housework is, I, this would be more for like projects that you're working on in your house. So let's say you've decided to create a minimalist project and you're going to clear out your closet. Well, that's not necessarily a routine. That's something that is a project. So in which case I would create it under my home project. But housework in terms of cleaning the kitchen, cleaning the bedroom, cleaning the living room, whatever. Well, that's a routine and I would have that in my routines folder. Down here I've got lawnmower repairs because the summer is well and truly underway and for those of you wanting to keep your grass under control then maybe you need to get your lawnmowers repaired and this would be where you would put in the tasks related to getting your lawnmowers repaired. I'm not going to go too much into details how to create tasks or projects in this week's episode. That will be for a future episode. And then the annual summer holiday and if you look inside here there's 17 tasks so I've actually got a lot of tasks in there already. Um, but as I say we're going to come on to tasks at a later date. Now moving on to areas of focus. Areas of focus are for things that you are not projects in themselves because they don't have any uh, specific end date. They're just things that you need to keep on top of that does improve your life for example your relationship with your family that obviously improves your life ha developing your career maybe some learning things that you want to keep track of again that's developing you as a person and exercise of course is maintaining your health and that is another area of focus i would not class these as routines myself but maybe you might have a different opinion on that and that is perfectly okay. But this is just an example of what you may keep in areas of focus. Another example of what you might keep in your areas of focus is things like hobbies. So for example, if you have a hobby 
of doing woodwork on a weekend, then maybe you would have that in there. Because unless you're doing a project, then of course it would just be an area of focus. The next one of course is goals. Goals are very, very important because goals is what's gonna take your life to achieving the success that you really, really want. And I would separate out goals from areas of focus simply because goals is a much more personal thing and it is very much a selfish thing. They're your goals and they should be selfish. So your career development, for example, would go in here. Maybe you're gonna do some research first, action, and then OPA, which I've covered in a previous episode. So I would keep my goals in here and I have covered this and I'll put a link into here about how to create your goals in to doist but for now i just wanted to show you that we, you keep your goals section here where you would be able to keep tasks that will come into your daily tasks so that you're moving forward on your goals on a daily basis so that's the goals and the final one and this is the big tip of this week is the someday maybe folder the someday maybe folder is a brilliant folder and here is my big tip for the Someday Moby folder. To maintain a functioning projects list, my strong recommendation is that you only keep projects that you're working on over the next three months in your main project area. So up here, projects, all the projects, except for areas and focus and goals, but all the projects in your work and home area if you're working on them now or within the next three months, then that is what you would keep there. Anything that you're not gonna start within the next three months goes into your someday maybe folder. And let me just give you a quick tip. It's very easy to forget about your someday maybe folder because it's not one of those folders that we would actually check on a weekly review. What I would always do is here, I've got, if you look here, a project here that she's got, write a book on the history of the Labour Party. What I would do here is I would review book idea um, and I would set a date of in three months. And if you put in three months, I can add that task and it's going to come up on the 24th of September. That would come up. Now, what I would also do is I would flag that red um, because I want that to be on top of my list on the 24th of September. Now, when that comes round on the 24th of September, I can then make a decision of whether I'm going to start writing that book within the next three months. If my decision is, no, I don't have time yet, I'm going to push that off to next year, then all I have to do is go in here and I could say, review that in three months' time. So I could do it like this way and say on the 24th, <laughs> Christmas Eve, maybe not. Let's say I'm going to do that on the 1st of December. And that's all you have to do. If you're ready to move this project now, so you think, yep, I'm going to do that now. So you check off the review and you just drag the project into your works project right here and when I open that and then close it you'll see it's dropped into my work projects folder that's what you do so any project that you're not going to work on over the next three months do not put it into your work or home folders put it into your someday maybe folder and give it a review date in three months time that way you will keep your work and home projects folders down to the things that you are actually working on right now. It's a really, really clever trick to use within Todoist. Okay, that's really all I wanted to cover in projects. Keep it simple, use the six main project areas here. We've got routines, work, home, areas of focus, goals, and someday maybe. The two most important ones, of course, are your work and your home folders. Areas of focus, I still think, is a very important area because it's helping you to maintain your focus on the things that are important to you in your life. Your goals, of course, are really important because if you're not achieving or moving towards your goals every single day, then you're never going to achieve your goals. So having a goals folder in your to-do is one way of keeping your eye 
on the things that you are really wanting to achieve in your life and someday maybe is for all those things that you're not ready to work on just yet so don't let them take up space inside your main projects window hopefully this little back to basics episode has given you um, a refresh if you like of being able to get your to do is back under control and back working for you instead of you working for Todoist. Remember guys to keep things as simple as you possibly can so that you can actually maintain focus on the things that are really important to you in your life. Thank you very much for watching this episode. Don't forget to sub don't forget to like this video before you finish and don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already subscribed. It just remains for me now to wish you all an incredibly productive week.